Okay. All right. Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful sunset over paradise today. It is a glorious, it is a, it is a Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday. Good Lord, is it Wednesday? I've lost all track. It is December 13th, 2022. 14th, I think. Is it the 14th? It's, it's the 14th. Wednesday the 14th, and we are in, I have washed up in Santa Barbara, California, and I am finally meeting this man. Uh, What's Never. my name again? What is this man's name? It has been it's not Richardson. No, it means it's not <laughs> Elliot Richardson. I th is Elliot Richardson still in prison? <laughs> this is my good friend Elliot Jacobson, and we are finally meeting. Uh, we have I have been friends with this man for a year. He's one of my been one of my imaginary friends on YouTube. Yeah. But, uh, well, now it's real. And hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here. Um, for, uh, I'm not for uh, your show names and for mine, which is uh, Climate Casino. So you are... Well, we got the four C's. We got Collapse, Collapse Chronicles, Climate, Climate Casino. Climate Casino. Good Lord. So, Everywhere you go, you're, so we got the C word. So we are toasting. Here we have our, our, our margaritas. Margaritas for the end uh, times. Uh, they, they took some more because here in Santa Barbara, we don't... We don't have the same ingredients as easy uh, to find as these people in New York. <laughs> it, it's something, but uh, this is a, I'm drinking uh, my second Sam Margarita, and it is a, a fabulous margarita, oh, I have to God. say. So we, I don't have a whole lot of idea of what we're doing sitting here, but... Uh, I think I was going to ask you a couple questions uh, okay. that, that nobody's probably ever asked you before, and you've never thought about, and I can completely right. surprise you and shock you. And all of that. So, now, um, so before you go, I just want people to. Uh, this is not. I, I don't want anyone listening to it, wherever this winds up. That this is not an interview. This is two doomers sitting on a couch, drinking a margarita, talking off the top of our heads. We're not going to have charts and graphs. We're not going to be reading other people's articles. So. Just with that understanding, this is a conversation between two people. So um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> no, here, here's the problem with Doomer questions. Is is the, the answer. Number, yeah. the, no, the number one question mm -hmm. people always ask Doomers is, is. so when is it going to happen, right? So, so when is X, Y, or Z going to happen? You know, when are we going to go extinct? It, when we're is the going, world, I, I, so I've answered this question. I know you have. It is going to be Wednesday. March 17th, 2074, at 354 in the afternoon. And by we will the, go next day. March 17th. Next question. No, March 17th, by the way. It's St. Patty's Day. St. Patty's Day. You're going to be drinking a so green beer. Be. You're going to be sitting there with your friends, enjoying right. it while you still can with that last green beer. So everybody. And you're going to drop dead. You're going to mark it on the <laughs> Google calendars. They're going to mark it on whatever they have. They're going to. Set a reminder for that I, date. I'm going to be 115 years 2074, old. 2074, so, yeah. All right. So we're both going to be 115 years old. All right. So that's <laughs> the date. So we have it, all right? So <laughs> the date is set, and uh, we don't need to ever address that and, question and you know, again. Guys, that son of a bitch, you actually have to repeat and get it right. <laughs> all right. Maybe I should make an over-under <laughs> bet on that. <laughs> Make an over under bet on that. Yeah, you, uh, know, you know, I have tried to, like, people yeah. want to make over because if you don't know me, all right, I have this website, uh, climatecasino.net, and I actually put up wagers there. They're all fake money wagers, but I put my odds for various. This is Human Extinction Casino. Right, so, so <laughs> Human Extinction is a really tough one to bet on because, you know, I mean, if, if we're extinct, then it's going to be hard to collect. Well, right? that. I, that's, yeah, for years I've been trying to make, no one has ever taken me up on the bat. I know, so. It never happened. So, so probably the one, the <laughs> one that, the one line I really like that okay. I have is, because uh, we just passed eight million, eight billion people, We right? did, we zipped right past that one, brother. So the question is, <laughs> well, we stay above eight billion, how long are we going to stay above eight billion for? And I'm guessing at least five years. I'm going to say at least five years we'll be above eight billion. And, and That's a safe bet. I think so. I think we'll probably hit eight and a half or something before anything notable happens. But 
anyway, so that's the kind of stuff, you know, people ask about, about uh, when is stuff going to happen all the time, you know, and I guess that's, that's the kind of question, you know, if you have a lot of anxiety, you want, you want to know, it's like, it's like wanting to know the day you die, right? Yeah. I would really like to know what is the date I'm going to die. Would you really like to know that or not? I, I really would not. I would, I would not. That would be weird. I, I, I think there was a uh, Twilight Zone about that, as a matter of fact. Well, there was a Twilight Zone episode where a guy could pay a certain amount of money to buy a year off of someone else's life. Okay. And, uh, you know, so he kept on buying people's lot of one year, because he said you wouldn't notice yeah, yeah, a year yeah, from yeah. that and a year from this. And uh, I don't know about the one, yeah, but. No, I'm 95% I'm, I'm sure there was a, either Twilight Zone or Outer Limit, one of those, about where people knew the day they were going. If you, if you knew the day you were going to die, what would you be doing different in your life today? And yeah. it would make a difference how close it is. Yes. And I think right. that's, you know, that's, that's a question that uh, a lot of people should be asking themselves. They I, should be. I think that makes a uh, huge difference in the way you conduct your life, you know, is, is if, if you knew the date, it's one thing, but you can just kind of move from that to, yeah, but I know I'm going to die, so what should I be doing differently? Exactly. And forget about the exact date, you know. And it's I, called using death as your advisor. You're, you're a Carlos Castaneda fan, too, isn't it? Some, I, I, I read all of the Castaneda probably by the time I was 17 or 18, and, and I don't know if I've ever revisited it since. All I remember are strange monsters chasing people around through the desert. Uh, and I know there's a lot of wisdom, and you are quite, quite well, deep into that. Well, using death as your advisor is one of the main... Uh, it, it, you got to ask yourself, what is the worst that's going to happen in this situation? Right here? No, no, in any situation that you think you're having some, you know, some drama, that something's going on, like, you're, you're trying to make a decision, what is the worst that's going to happen if I take this path or this path or, th or this path? So, so for me, the worst that's going to happen is, um, you know, civilization can end, and honestly, I don't really care whether the 7-Eleven down at the corner closes or the laundromat. Speak for yourself. Well, I would not have a tub of, of, I, a, of tub, Rocky Road ice, ice cream. You would not, not have this line in your, have, in, in your but, margarita. But in the big picture, I love that I, I would love this three block. Block. I absolutely <laughs> love that 7-Eleven three blocks but from the here. But the thing, <laughs> the thing that I, I, I'm sad about are things like music and art and, you know, medicine. And 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven. <laughs> All right. So we'll keep the 7-Eleven. Music, but, art, and stuff in that order. All right. But, okay. I'll, I'll, I'm going to put 7-Elevens above art, as a matter of fact. Okay. I'm going to go music, 7-Eleven, art. And my, right. okay. <laughs> and, and if I had to, like, uh, uh, you, you get these three are going to survive. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the, the legacy of humanity. <laughs> Those three. Music, Sam, Sam's <laughs> legacy of humanity right here. So, um, yeah, hey, before we go too deep into this and people stop watching this, I just want to mention something. Yeah, make something. the announcement. The all right, all right. People already. So the, we've already lost half the people who started <laughs> watching this. We really apologize for how scattered this is. But here's the big announcement, all right? Yeah. Friday, all right? Today's the 14th. Friday's going to be the 16th, 16th, right? We are going to do a YouTube live show. That's right. Live with you chatting so we can take your questions we can answer your doom questions as best yeah. as we can so we don't have to sound like this absolutely 100 percent live we probably will have margaritas though uh, we will we will have margaritas but i've already answered the question of where we're going extinct so don't you so know, you cannot a, ask that question again well that we is, haven't asked you the question yet that is, you, well you i took that little i did, easily, I, did. Uh, I, I, I think there's let a me need. give them more information here so so friday 3 p.m. Pacific, that's Western time, and 6, 6 o'clock if you Eastern. are in Syracuse, New York, and middle of the night sometime if you're in Europe, and very early in the morning if you're in Australia or Asia and or 5 something. 5 p.m. in Chicago, and, and 4 p.m. in Denver. We right. have listeners in Denver. So I'm going to put a link. I'm going to uh, schedule that thing, and there should be a link down there below this video and you can just click on that, and you can set a reminder, and you can join us. So yeah, we're going to be live on you. I'm going to get um, him on my channel 
All yeah, we right. can't do it on Collaborate. Too much of Luddites to do this he on He does not channels. have it set up. So it's going to no. be on my channel. My channel is uh, on YouTube anyway. I don't have to tell you the name, but just look down below. There'll be a link down there. I'm also going to announce it on Twitter. Um, so, you know, you'll find it. So, yeah, that's the big event. This is, this is a, a one-off, right? We, we may never do this again. I mean, this is a really a one-off that you're even out here, and it's spectacular. All right, so... He left Syracuse yesterday morning. It was 9 degrees. Yeah. It's now 12 degrees in right. Ithaca, New York. 12 degrees. And he is here in California where oh. we got to about 65 or 70 today. Oh, man, guys, I'm telling you. And uh, I had to get I just had to get out for a few days. I couldn't stand it any longer. And uh, you have a little dog. And so the he little dog will come with you. So the little dog is fending for himself in nine degrees. Yeah, I just left him out by himself. Yeah, no, I. I he is I, being well taken care. He's of. being well taken care of. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see. Question number two for the 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 second question we get. Well, okay, when am I the the extinction thing? Is something like, well, um, how is it going to happen? What's it going to look like? You know, what what what's it going to look? like? And uh, I don't know. What do you Where say? We, we are, I'm chronicling it, I'm chronicling the developments day by day. Uh, well, that's what, that's what you've been doing. That's what your show is all about, is, is the latest, you know. I have never swerved off the needle one quarter of one inch. I, I, I have never, have I ever backtracked on anything I have ever said? Of as far as this whole subject is like, concerned. I'm really sorry I got that wrong. Yeah. Yes, you have. What did I get wrong? You said Elliot Richardson, and then you apologized and said Elliot Jacobson. Oh, okay, I got you. Yes, uh, <laughs> that, that was so. Yes, so that was just written to you. That's right. That, but you said Richardson on your show. No, I put it in the in, in the, the email to me in the. What I did was, Elliot, is when I read one of his fine essays, I put Elliot Richardson colon the quote, like I always do, and I sent him the email and immediately noticed after I had sent the email that I had I'd already hit the send button with the name wrong, I immediately noticed it and corrected it. So Elliot Richardson was one of Nixon's. Yeah, he was one of the Nixon Watergate uh, guys. People who went to prison for some. I, I was I was fourteen years old. Uh, it's nice that you associate me with uh, deviant that? criminal behavior. Yeah, it's, it just things, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, Elliot. Yeah, I can see how I just fit that. I just I just go right there. Well, just, there's Elliot son. Right. In yeah, two know. syllables. I know. And, and uh, you know, but I wrote it down, but I immediately changed it. It never went to press that way. So, yeah, um, how's it going to happen? Um, uh, well, I'm glad that you cover that every day. But uh, anyway, you can ask us that question during chat. Um, I have an answer for that question. But I think, I think the timing question and what's it going to look like are the two questions we get right, all the time. And, I, and I've never understood the the timing question but uh, okay i just want you to everyone knows my opinion and, I, and well we know yours now about the human extinction by 2026 or or even 2030 that obviously i am not part of that crowd yeah um so you know there's this whole movement um of doomers right a movement of doomers. Uh, a movement of doomers <laughs> Who, who maybe, Doomer movements. Who who might be the Uber Doomers, if you want to put it that way, who uh, who are more focused on extinction. And you know, for me, the um, following the science of all of this is something I really, I you know, I I get very manic about it. I I like to uh, delve into the numbers, and you're more at the the journalistic level of that, you know, experience, but. Nothing I've ever seen points to that. I mean, nothing. Scientific. Have you ever seen one iota of evidence that humans are going to be extinct by 2026 or 2030? Um, one iota. Well, once in a while, I will see um, 
NASA say that they've discovered an asteroid okay. right. that has a one in forty thousand right. chance of hitting us between now and twenty twenty or something. But like they that. put that cue ball. Didn't they fire that cue ball up there already? Look up they tried ago? one to see if they could hit the thing, and they, they hit it. it. Yeah, they hit it. All right, we are. They, so NASA's got it covered. There is well, no chance. Well, uh, it depends on when they, have they need to find it soon enough, and all, yeah, but. Anyway, so there's that, and then there's also the uh, we you know we could have one of these electromagnetic bursts from the sun. Right, that would be good. That could happen any time. We could have a super volcano go uh, off, right? Between now and 2026. Of course, you know, of course, we could have nuclear Armageddon go. That, that could happen in the next 20 minutes. Right. So, I mean, there are many <laughs> pathways to human extinction by, yeah. uh, well, if not total, but at least virtual, right? So. Um, but but the, the most common pathway, which is due to uh, having a lot of humans on the planet. Uh, <laughs> so let me ask it, th this question. Are you a fan of human extinction? Um, do you support it? I mean, do I think the planet would be better off without uh, uh, humans? All right. We'll make that, okay, yeah. Would the planet be better off without humans? Because saying I'm a fan of extinction is sort of like saying I want to, you know, figure out a way, right, which is... I, I want to figure out a way. Well, I, I'm not... <laughs> and it's called, it, it's called sterilize the planet. All right. Well, so you're not a fan of human extinction. Well, I think the planet will be better off when we're gone. Okay. And uh, I am not personally going to make any um, suggestions for how that might take place. Now, and Elliot does... Obviously, there is a major... Elliot is a breeder. Uh, so you have how many kids and grandchildren? I have two sons and four grandkids. Oh. And, and uh, yeah, I, I can't... It makes a difference. I can't deny that it makes a difference. And you know where you see it making a difference is in these um, sort of youngish meteorologists, you know, like Housefather and, <coughs> and uh, you know, Zach lab is that how you say his name is he a breeder i don't know but i mean these, these younger ones who will show you their kids or talk about they're just having kids and um i think it does make a difference you know because uh it's almost built in that if you're going to have kids then you have to believe that they're going to have a, a life and you know i just asked this question recently in a poll on my my um twitter feed i said um you know how much longer do you think civilization is going to be around and i gave 2050 is sort of the maximum answer and somebody said well I sure hope it's around at least 75 years because my I just had a grandkid yeah. you know so I think I think that's uh, I think there's something to that I cannot deny it okay if you knew what how old were you when you had your first kid 21 21 if you knew at age 20 what you know today, would you have had kids? Um, so here's the thing. Um, I may have. I very well may have. Because I was very promiscuous at that age. I didn't take a lot of uh, care with, with yes. you know. Um, I think maybe if you had pushed that question up a few years past 21, I, I would have made different choices. But at that point in my life, I, I really had one thing on my mind, I got I to gotta say. And uh, yeah, it turned out, the kids are great. By the way, my two sons both work in solar, and so at the very least, they are themselves sort of viewing what they can do as, you know, to preserve 7-Eleven and All right. music and art. Thank God, thank God they're on the case. Right. So My Rocky Road ice cream could survive. Now, of course, 7-Eleven has to have trucks delivering the Rocky Road ice cream to it and the limes and yeah. all the rest. Yeah. I mean, it's 7-Eleven. So that's true. It's 7-Eleven without... So if you have 7-Eleven, you need Without 18-wheelers is like, you, yeah. you know... And then you need refrigerants. Is this my the, thing on the... Uh, it might be mine. Yeah, so you need uh, electricity, right? Because they gotta keep the coolers cool. Yeah, right? just having 7-Eleven without all the rest of it. Well, the other thing is if you could have 7-Eleven, you need the currency, you need the monetary system in order to, yeah. uh, so you need a profit motive to still exist, right? If you're gonna have a 7-Eleven, I mean, they can't just be giving the stuff away. 
Which means we still need money. Well, as much as I want to hold on to them, it probably ain't going to happen. But we can hold on to art and music. Well, I, I'm thinking that... that we like, had art and music a long time before we had 7-Eleven. Yeah, I'm thinking that, that you can make music with, you know... Or beating on a, a hollow stick, A sticks or something, you know, but you can't make Rocky Road ice cream that easily. Without global industrial civilization? Without, I think, I think that's <laughs> it. <laughs> no, it's going to suck. We were talking about our dear friend Gail Zawacki, the late great Gail Zawacki, and as she, her answer to that question, uh, I don't know when it's going to collapse, but I don't want to be part of it, and neither do you. Was her uh, was her answer to uh, when is global industrial civilization going to collapse? But Gail got out in time. Well, yeah. So um, if you ever have a chance, and you're just sort of looking for um, an archive of, of uh, great articles to read. She had a blog called Wits End. Now I interviewed Gail and got all those links. So if you look up Gail Zawacki yes. at Collapse Chronicles. Yeah. Spelled like it sounds. Um, but yeah, so uh, she is um, was one of my mentors as a doomer, i got to confess. So um, somebody I have great affection for. But you're, see, Elliot is fairly new to this, but, but he is, but he's a quick learner. Well, so what would you say, when did would you say you officially, because I, I mean, I read Pilled in 2008. When did you cross the line? I mean, it's interesting you say red pill. I mean, I went to um, Earth Day in 1977 at UC Davis and saw Timothy Leary speak about, um, like, populating, you know, life in space and exploring the galaxy. So he was already ready to get rid of this planet and, and go somewhere else. So I would say, you know, I, I was sort of part of the uh, general environmentalists and, you know, being in California from a very young age. And in the early 80s, when Reagan got, became president. That was um, a red pill for a lot of us. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we started stockpiling gallon jugs of water. Oh, really? Because we thought uh, nuclear Armageddon was around the corner. I mean, it was it, what he did with, it, he really pushed the limits with, with Russia. Um, and just a kind of person he was. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I've been, I've been more or less aware. I mean, oil spills is a big deal here in California. So when you grow up, and I mean, I grew up around the environmental movement. So when you are in that movement and you see it sort of get um, stolen by the green movement, yeah. right? by, the, by this idea that rather than preserving the environment, rather than having environmentalism being about let's save the environment, environmentalism is now about how can we rip the environment apart to build solar and wind and you know mine lithium so we can have batteries and well it ain't gonna happen ain't gonna happen but that's what the environmentalist movement has become right it's it's, it's lost its focus it's completely it's completely lost its focus so it, are, are, are you an environmentalist I, I am an old school okay. environmentalist not a not a Solar wind, <laughs> you know, let's mine lithium, let's mine cobalt environment. But you said your sons are into this all. That, they are into that. So yeah. they're buying it. Yes. They're buying into I, it. I think they know, though. Are you going to give them the book Bright Green Lies to read? I think I've given them both the recommendation. <laughs> um, Being in the business. Yeah, um, Bright Green Lies is also a documentary. You can, uh, a couple dollars, you can watch it. It's... It's well worth your time, and, and also Planet of the Humans yeah. by um, uh, Michael Moore, right? That's not really by Michael Moore. I can't well, remember it, the, the fellow's name. Yeah, but he kind of uh, uh, put his name on it. Yeah, just to, yeah, Michael Moore put his, put his stamp on it, but it's that other fellow who I was, I was actually going to interview that guy uh, before right I was yeah I was pretty much all set to interview that dude and anyway it didn't happen so what did um, what do you think about people putting like gluing their hands to uh, paintings and stuff or throwing soup on them I I think it's counterproductive to the cause it's going to make enemies they don't need to make it's it, it, it's I, I don't I, I don't get it uh, 
if, if what's going on on this planet it, it isn't enough to, you know what I'm saying, to, to make the news, uh, it, it, no, I, I, it's counterproductive. It's gonna hurt the. It's gonna hurt. And the do you feel the same way about like blocking uh, roads and yeah, uh, yeah. airports? It, 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 and it, uh, so, what kind of um, activism do you think could help, if any? Is it? I mean, is that? Is there even an activism if it, that if, could help? If it if it makes you sleep better at night, I get get out there and activate but it's but it's not doing at this point it's uh, there, there, there there's absolutely nothing we can do uh, but I mean there's on any level but clearly there's things that we could do so so the way I feel about that question is that while we can't really do things that are going to make humanity uh, survive you know in any reasonable way any longer so maybe five years ten years <laughs> 20 years whatever there are things we can do that can preserve the earth for whatever comes next. You can help turtles across the road still. And if you see a turtle crossing the road, you can still stop, get out of your damn car, and help that turtle to the other side of the road. They don't have, you we can don't still have, do that. We don't have turtles here, so I'm assuming that they have turtles in, in New York. Area. I can't believe how many snapping turtles we have uh, in, in uh, Cander, New York. It is a snapping turtle. I have helped many a snapping turtle across the road All right. in the dark park. but you can still do that but, but you know I mean I'm using that I'm speaking metaphorically does, does anybody speak metaphorically I, I, literally, I literally mean if you see a turtle going across the road and you can prevent one of our fellow earthlings from getting run over by some clueless moron human and so I literally mean that but you know the so, metaphor so it's turtle maybe. both literal and metaphorical yes it's the literal and metaphor this is a, so, a case where it works literally and metaphor so a turtle could represent the land that they want to put a, uh, a new uh, lithium mine on right if, if there's yeah, yeah, but 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 there's a big difference between helping a turtle across the road and stopping a new lithium mine. There there there's one way to stop a, a, every lithium mine on the planet. There is one. Well, there's two ways. I mean, humans to go extinct. That's always the be, the best way. But is don't buy lithium. Don't buy the products. I have. Uh, one of my broken record rats, I don't have it one more time because I don't know if I've ever had it on Collapse Brown. Have you read Atlas Shrugged? Um, no. You've never read Atlas Shrugged? I, I may have read it, parts <laughs> of it, but I'm not a good reader of novels. I can't keep track of it. It's thick. It's a lot I of can't, It's James Joyce, right? No. And <laughs> Rand. Oh, God. Cut this part out. Yeah, I know. Cut this <laughs> part. Cut this part out. No, well, this is second Margarita. Yeah. yeah uh, well, well uh, so... My favorite scene in the book, I've mentioned this many times, uh, this book was written in 1957, and the setup is this, is that it's this lefty, uh, this very left-wing liberal uh, professor uh, at some liberal arts college is sitting having a discussion with one of these planet eaters, with one of these industrialists. And, and, and uh, so they're having, the, and, and so he's going off, the, 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 the lefty is, is going off on regulating uh, how we need more regulation to keep you idiots in line, government, and all, all that, See, you know, the usual line. And, and the planet eater is, is sitting there just laughing and, and the planet eater says to the, to the little lefty professor, he says, there is one way to stop me. There is one way to stop me. And they, it's like, what's that? Stop buying my product. And that's it. We stop buying their products, they go away. But we're not gonna stop buying their products. And, and, and that and that's what shut the the you know the professor up. I, I guess is you stop buying their damn products. I, we're, I, but we're not going. We're not going to stop buying their products. That was 1957. I'm thinking of the solution she had in another book. Didn't she have a character Howard Rourke? 
Wasn't that a character in one of her books? In Fountainhead? Might yeah, have been. didn't he blow up a building? Good God, I barely remember that book. All right. <laughs> But he was, um, was probably he had a he had a picture he had he had created the architectural design for his masterpiece, you know, skyscraper. Okay. And someone had come in at some point and made some small change to his design. And when the whole thing went up and it wasn't his exactly his, his solution was <laughs> blow the whole thing up. <laughs> so so metaphorically speaking, right? What was the metaphor in that? Well. I mean, the metaphorically speaking is if somebody puts a lithium mine in, I mean, you can treat that like a skyscraper, right? I mean, I'm not really... Well, once a lithium mine is in, it's in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can try to turn yeah. it into a golf course. You could, uh, right? 20 years later, probably ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to work. Well, you know, they turn a lot of uh, garbage dumps into uh, tract homes. Yeah. yeah. Good Lord. So it goes both directions. But yeah, hey, um, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, is that the time? 6 p.m.? Yeah. Uh, live on YouTube. We I mean, don't want to run into Sandy's Friday night thing, so we, we, we yeah. went and dare. We went and dare, raised the ire of Sandy's So show, after you it? watch our show, we're going to be Sandy's opening act. You'll, yeah, we'll, we'll open right, we can, and then we'll send you there, right? So it'll be a fine show. Well, I don't know if we should show this. I don't know if we should post this thing or not. We uh, we spoke dangerously at times. Telling people not to buy the Planet Eaters product. Telling them to blow up skyscrapers. Uh, could that get us? No, because I was quoting a book, a, a uh, character in a book. Okay, all I'm all I'm talking about helping turtles across the road. What problem could the YouTube cop bots have with helping a turtle across the road? But seriously, help turtles across the road whenever you can. Uh, when I'm so, when, don't misunderstand me. When I'm saying there is nothing we can do, I'm talking about there's nothing we can do to stop the avalanche that's coming. But that does not mean we we need to stop helping turtles across the road. You you understand? Uh, you can still. Uh, have some uh, compassion for your fellow Earthlings uh, yeah. on, on, on the way down. So. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I think as individuals, you know, we all feel like we want to do some huge thing. We want to be the one who, uh, you know, we glue our hand to a painting, we get worldwide attention, and we've done this huge thing. But I mean, in practice, each of us doing small things, you know, is also like like getting a lot of people to do small things because right now. Not that many people do small things, right? I mean, honestly, I go through the day and I just, I just, I just don't see a lot of like small random acts of just kindness. small, just small <laughs> random things, right? I mean, just walk instead of drive to the to the store next time you have to go shopping. It's such a small thing, right? Of course, you can't do that in where you live. Uh, it, it would be a nine mile walk there to nine mile, yeah. eighteen miles to so go to a Seven Eleven. It's about day. a half a mile to my Seven Eleven. You want to you want to walk yeah. there at one a.m. tonight to get a second. Half gallon of rock I hope I want to eat a half gallon of rock red ice cream between now and 1 a.m. But uh, all right, all right. This but is this a, is an example. So you you guys need to come up with the questions if you have any interest in what either one of us have to say about this. Yeah, and it's clear that we uh, disagree on just about everything. Mm -hmm. So we'll uh, you'll be sure to spark. You will a get lot. a spectrum of. You will get a lot of animosity and sparks and and <laughs> and uh, you know death rattles coming from us as we uh, fight over these issues we disagree yeah. with. Yeah. Uh... All right, Sam. Toast. We but will see you guys on Friday. We'll see you then.